Good morning, everybody. It's William Nayrod here, the Paradise Guy, with Viva and Christina. And uh, we are walking down the street here. We're going to catch a cab. We're going to head down to Playa Santa Cruz, which is the main uh, area in Huatuco, where the cruise ships come in and also where a lot of the tours leave. Today we got a special day. We're heading out on a very nice boat. We're gonna be out on the water all day, looking at the bays, looking at some of the beaches, and you're coming along with us, so stay tuned. So one of the best ways to get around when you're in Huatuco is of course, a taxi cab and we all love riding in taxi cabs right well Viva does she thinks it's pretty cool all right we've arrived we're heading up to the beach area where we will hopefully find our captain waiting for us and then we'll head out and start our tour should be an awesome day Well, we found out that when you try to access the boat entry area of the Bahia Playa Santa Cruz area, um, they charge you a 5 peso and 50 cent entrance fee. And yes, it gives you access to the sanatorios for bathrooms. <laughs> well, as you can see behind me, this is one of the main marinas here in Huatuco. There are boats everywhere. Every kind of boat you can imagine. Huge party boats, catamarans, or you've got little tiny skiffs and you've got everything in between. We're definitely gonna be on something in between. And so the day begins, we're on board, beautiful boat, nice comfortable seating, good shade, which is very, very important when you're going out all day on the water. We also brought plenty of sunscreen, which is very necessary, and of course, some cold beers. So let's go, let's go have a good day. So we're pulling into Playa Santa Cruz first. Now this is where the major cruise ships come in. They dock right here. Right now, because of the pandemic, they aren't coming in here currently. But you can imagine how crowded this beach gets back here when five or 6,000 people get off of a cruise ship and hang out there. Um. going to spend a lot of time here actually we're always at Playa Santa Cruz but I wanted to swing through and show you what it looked like from the water.
Okay, so in the background right now, you're seeing Playa Mage. And Mage is another beach that we've been to several times. It's a beautiful beach, nice restaurants, uh, good for swimming. So it looks like we picked a pretty good day to come out. The sun is out, the water seems relatively calm and it's extremely clear today. So literally as we're sitting here and I look down off the side of the boat, I can see the bottom very, very clearly. Very, very popular beach. We've been there several times. As a matter of fact, we were there already this week. And again, when you swim out in the water from there far enough, you can actually see the pier over in Playa Santa Cruz where the cruise ships come in. So very, very close proximity and both of them beautiful, swimmable beaches here in the Huatucal area. <laughs> really calm today. When you get out of the base, it does get uh, a lot rougher. There are some pretty big swells out here. back there you're gonna see what's called El Faro. El Faro is a lighthouse. I don't exactly know what the history of it was but before I publish this video I'm gonna look it up and give you some facts. <laughs> Notice the mountains in the background. Those are the Sierra Madres, and actually they're they're quite large. And there's beautiful uh, vegetation all over that. There's even some coffee plantations up in the mountains, which hopefully someday we'll get a chance to go visit. For those of you that are watching that are going to come out and get on a boat and go tour the bays, if you're prone to seasickness, be sure to take some Dramamine because these seas really do have some large swells. from our vantage point right now, but if you look at the hills, you'll notice that the lush green vegetation is starting to turn a little bit brown. Leaves are changing and starting to drop off. So while there's not really a cold season here, 
there are seasons when the leaves are on all of the trees and there are seasons when they're not. So as I understand it here in the next month or so, those hillsides that you're looking at will be brown. maybe if you come to Mexico is that when you go to the supermarket and you buy a lot of goods, makeup, in this case sunscreen, toothpaste, you name it, um, if it's a small package it will likely have a lot of tape of this nature around it. That's to prevent theft of course and it's it's a really normal thing here. Be prepared to have a scissors on hand or some really sharp nails or whatever cutting implement because this is a fact of life man. to think. So our one-year-old Viva here looks like she has her sea legs. The swells don't seem to be bothering her at all. So when you're out on the water, be sure to apply sunscreen liberally and or possibly wear a long sleeve shirt. The water reflects like a mirror. The sun comes in, bounces off, the water comes right up and hits you, even when you're sitting in the shade. So, uh, don't say I didn't tell you. What attracts me to this area so much is just this behind us, that view, that mix of the mountains coming down to the sea. The fact that it's not crazy over commercialized or developed yet, um, it's just a beautiful gradual transition and I can't get enough of that view ever. So this huge beach that you see in the background is called Kakaluta and it's an awesome beach. It's a very desirable destination. There's generally not any people there, uh, or if there are, there's just a few. But it's really easy to get to by boat, but a little more difficult if you drive there. If you drive there, you can count on a pretty long hike in, but sometimes there are people there with ATVs that will actually drive you in for a few pesos. Another thing to be aware of with Kakaluta, there's no shade. So be sure to bring some shade with you of some sort. You know, I just can't get over how beautiful the mountains look behind the beach. We are here in such a beautiful area of Mexico where literally you can be in the mountains in an hour or you can be on the beach in a few minutes. So the best of both worlds. The beach you're seeing back behind me right now, whoa, <laughs> is Chantaqual. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Chantaqual is a boat access only beach, quite beautiful. Uh, again, you're not going to see a lot of people there except the people that are getting there via boat. whether or not you want to do that. Some people think it's a good idea. Other people, maybe not so much. For us, it's definitely important to be safe, but it's also important to have a little bit of comfort and not be so hot. And those life jackets can be pretty darn hot. Although drowning can really suck too. So nice, of course, to hit these beautiful beaches and relax. You may also notice 
notice when you look up in the hills that you see these big saguaro-like cacti. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but they're beautiful and they're obviously native to the area. And it also gives you a hint that this area is very desert-like. The amount of rainfall that the Huatuco area gets is actually not that much. It rains maybe a month or so out of the year. And the rest of the time it gets very, very dry and very, very sunny. We're so excited, we're at our first stop of the day. It is a beach called Hikarao. And wow, the, the water is calm here, it is beautiful. Literally, I can look down in the water and see the bottom. We're surrounded by these beautiful hills everywhere you look. Uh, the beautiful cacti are everywhere. And this is a very, very picturesque setting. I can't wait to get out of the boat and enjoy this. So this is a boat access only beach. It's part of the national park, um, which is nice. Watuku and the area around here has really paid attention to uh, sustainability, conservation. They really have a nice plan to see how this place can be not only a great tourist attraction, but how that can be a sustainable project. So I figured out what the cactus are actually called. They're called Organo or Candelaro, which uh, of course uh, is like candle opera or organ. Um, and they look very much like that. They're very beautiful, uh, actually stunning. So when the rest of the hills turn brown, they always stay green. Well, I put on the mask, went over and swam. On the edges over here, there's some little corals and lots of little fish, so it's beautiful. I mean, it's not, you know, the barrier reef or anything, but it is um, definitely a, a pretty area. It's very pristine, very peaceful, and uh, it's always nice to see pristine environments with beautiful little fish. So it's been a while since I've been out in some deep swells and my tummy did feel it a little bit. I grew up on boats, but you know, every experience is different. And that's where good old saltines come in. They actually do help settle your stomach, as does the view like this in super clear water um, and just a really nice, soft, almost isolated beach. Hi, Daviva, what you doing? Are you having crackers? Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, I am having crackers. Yes, that's what I'm doing. Snacks. Snacky snacks. So we're fortunate enough today to be on this really nice well craft. It's got a little sleeping area down here. It's got a little toilet. Um, it's got uh, great seats for fishing here in the back and uh, very comfortable uh, boat. You're not going to get a lot of people on here, but uh, for our little family, it's absolutely awesome. Okay, so we got our trusty captain over here, Omar, with uh, Corita. Uh, Corita is a fishing operator, but also does private tours like these. I highly recommend when you're in Huatuco, if you're looking for a very special experience, give Omar a call and uh, definitely uh, come experience this. 
So as you can imagine, fishing is quite a big deal around these parts. Uh, as a matter of fact, just up the road in Puerto Escondido in November, there is a big fishing tournament. I think 2,400,000 pesos for the winter. So uh, if you're into fishing and or surfing, because Puerto Escondido definitely has some great surfing, uh, you should check that out as well. What you doing, ladies? Huh? What you doing? Uh, huh? Chilling and chomping. She's got chompers now, so. Not all of them, but quite a few. How many teeth has she got? Six, I think. Six and a half. Six, six and a half teeth. Whoa. Hmm. Tend to be a big girl. Working on eight. Whoa. Yeah, you're a big girl. All right, well, this has been a beautiful stop. We loved it. It was great. Um, nothing but praise for this experience so far. We're gonna head out into the open ocean again. Of course, it's gonna be a little bit rough out there, but we've got a couple other stops that we're gonna go to that are going to be amazing. As a matter of fact, the one we're going to was rated by National Geographic as one of the 10 most beautiful beaches in the world. So stay tuned. about the Huatuco area is that it has nine bays and 36 different beaches. So that's a lot of beaches to visit. It's a lot of bays to see. Don't plan on doing that in one day. Take a couple days, heck, maybe a couple weeks to do that. So yeah, the seas are rough today. <laughs> So we're pulling into Chachaqual Bay right here. And obviously this is one of the more popular spots. I mean, there's major boats here, big catamarans, tons of people in the water uh, snorkeling and tons of people on the beach. So this is definitely a beautiful spot, but very, very popular. I think this place is absolutely beautiful. For my taste, it's got a little too many people, but uh, we're gonna get out and see what all the rage is about, because obviously this is a very popular spot. There must be a reason. <music> Some interesting facts about this beach is that it is boat access only. So this is um, a fun place to come and get away from town, but you're really not that far because the Watuco Airport apparently is just like right over the hill right there. Yeah. So you've got uh, snorkeling obviously because everybody's in the water snorkeling. You've got a great beach because you've got everybody up on the beach having a great time. And um, the water's very crystal clear. And uh, Christina feels like she's going to throw up. <laughs> Another cool fact about this area is that the sea turtles actually come up on shore here and nest and bury their eggs. So at certain times of year, I guess you can see lots of little baby sea turtles making their way back into the ocean. Um, what a beautiful sight that must be. Maybe sometime in the future, we'll uh, show you a video of that. Yeah. 
So Chachaqual, beautiful place. All the people that were here like 30 minutes ago are now getting back on the boats and leaving. So it looks like here in the next 20 minutes, we're gonna have basically this entire huge beach that goes all the way over there to ourselves. Hey, you all know if you have any questions about any of this stuff, please hit me up at info at paradiseguy.com. I'm always here to be your trusted resource to guide you in how to have fun, what to do, what not to do, and who to do it with here in the Watuco area, and of course, as always, beautiful Belize. Another important fact about Watuco is whale watching is actually a real thing here. So November, December, January, February, those are the hot months. Come down here during that season, find the right tour guide, which I can help you with, and go out and check out these whales. We're hoping to bring you a video of that very, very soon when we're able to get out and hopefully get lucky and see some beautiful whales. So if you're wondering about all these umbrellas and chairs and even the little bar that's set up there on the beach, it's kind of like a family business. They come here, they set up during the day, all the tourists come in here, they rent the umbrellas, they rent the chairs, they sell some drinks, they make some money. Uh, not a bad little business. One thing you need to know though is they don't sell dry money. Not many people left, everybody's piling out. So I have to be honest, when I first showed up here and I saw all the boats and tons of people around here. I was like, oh no, we're, this is gonna be like being back in town. But now everybody's leaving. So apparently if you come here a little bit later in the day, you can have this beach almost to yourself. So ask your tour guide, Omar, and uh, he'll tell you when is the best time to show up here to enjoy it. Whether you're looking for a party type atmosphere or whether you're looking for some solitude. All right, so Viva likes it. She thought this was a cool beach. Yeah. yeah. Clap your hands. Two thumbs up. Okay, the next beach we're heading to is actually very, very close to this one. It's called La India. And La India was actually highlighted by National Geographic, according to Omar, our captain today, as one of the 10 most beautiful beaches in the world. So, wow. You get to come with us to one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Let's go. Okay, so we're taking votes now on what is the most beautiful place in all of Mexico. So here's what we're gonna do. Everybody cast your vote by going down to the comments below and putting what you think is the most beautiful place in Mexico and then tell us why and then Later on, we're gonna do a video where we're gonna talk about what everybody thought and why they thought that. Doesn't that sound interesting? I think it does. So if you look carefully on the beach, you're gonna see tracks. And those tracks are the turtles that have crawled up the beach to their nests and laid their eggs. Look carefully and you will see all the tracks. It's beautiful and amazing. Pretty beautiful. go on one of these tours and you start seeing the different bays and start seeing the different beaches, you realize something. You realize what I want to do next time is I want to take a boat and I want to have them drop me off at this beach. I want to stay there all day and pick me up at the end of the day and take me back home. That sounds like an amazing adventure. Maybe we'll do that. by National Geographic is one of the most beautiful beaches in the world.
Welcome to La India. A beautiful beach. Oh my gosh. And I see one of the reasons why they thought this is a beautiful beach because look at this water. I mean, literally, it is crystal clear. And I've been in the Caribbean. The Caribbean has some very clear water, but this is right up there with it. I mean, maybe not quite as clear as like a Cozumel, maybe not quite as clear as some of the places in Belize, but for the Pacific Ocean, this is amazing. This is like- uh, The definition of the color teal. Yeah, the definition of the color teal. Good description. So, just so I can see how clear this water is compared to the Caribbean, I'm gonna jump in right now. I'm gonna slap on these little goggles and I'll let you know what I think, so stay tuned. You ready? The water is definitely beautiful and warm, I'll tell you that. But now let me take a look underneath and see what it looks like. So, verdict? All right, so here's what I think. It's very, very clear. There's a little trigger fish down there. He says hello, and uh, it's awesome. There's not a lot of coral or anything like that, but quite beautiful, and there is some sea life. And that beach is definitely beautiful. So, uh, thumbs up. I like it. So amid all this gorgeous natural beauty, one thing to keep in mind is that your cell phone will not work while you're out here in the bays. Um, and I think that makes perfect sense, don't you? Okay, so La India is definitely the most calm beach we've been to today. And the reason why is, if you look back over there, you see a rock formation that kind of goes across there and it actually breaks the waves that are coming in. So it's acting like a barrier reef. And if you look back over here on the beach of La India, you notice there's no wave action. So even though today is actually kind of a rough day out in the Pacific, here in La India, in this little bay, it's pretty calm. So we're also conducting extensive sunscreen tests today to see which is best. <laughs> Hopefully they work. Eva, what do you think about today? Are you having fun? Can you say dad, 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 dad? Dad, 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 dad? Eva's had a great time today, haven't you? Are you having a good time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you say dad, 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 dad? She's so smart. God, she knows how to say dad, 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 dad. now and check this place out wow is it beautiful and nobody's here well maybe one person but other than that this place is completely ours right now what a an amazingly beautiful pristine secluded beach now you can get here by car but like i said earlier it's a bit of a hike in and sometimes you can get people on atvs to actually give you a ride in of course for a few pesos, but uh, wow. Water here looks pretty spectacular. It's a nice protected day. It's relatively calm. Beach is beautiful. Can't wait to check this place out some more.
Okay, so we've gotten about as close to shore as we can get. We've dropped anchor. Gonna have to get in and swim the rest of the way. Okay, time to swim to shore. It's perilous, but I must go back to the peril. I was gonna ask you if you're gonna go to the peril. Oh, by the way, you should take your sunglasses off before you jump in the water. So there really was the peril. Yes, otherwise it could be very perilous. <laughs> As you can all see, folks. <laughs> wow, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Touch and go, eh, baby? Okay. Oh, I can stand up. Do I look like Mo Derrick? Yeah, that's totally you. Number 10 over there. I'll okay, go with the epic that, uh, journey. I wish I could take my camera in there and show you, but that cliff over there, there's about 12 vultures sitting on it, and then there's a freshwater lake on the other side, and there's all these little signs around it that say, you will die if you go here because there are crocodiles. So interesting. I thought Belize only had the crocodiles, but it appears that Mexico has them too. See? See, she's we smart. She's keep she's keeping her head above water. Ah, uh, look, the authorities are here already. They already knew you were coming. blanket yeah so as Omer sat on the edge of the boat sharpening his fishing knives we noticed that some storm clouds were building off in the distance and hoping that it wasn't going to ruin a perfect day well we've got some thunderstorms off in the distance that's kind of cool nice to hear the sounds of thunder as long as they don't come get us, right? Still sunny here. Okay, well that was a pretty refreshing swim. It's a bit rough here, not so bad though. You can swim out, no problem. And then the sand here is something pretty extraordinary. It's packed, but it's very smooth. It's not as soft as say at Integra, but it's still wonderful to walk on. And if you walk out that way, it hits to this sort of curve. It looks like a point from over here, but it's really a curve and the waves are coming from different directions and the vista is just stunning. Um, you've got the rocks and the blue blue sea and the contrast against this beige perfect sand. It's, I think this is one of my most uh, favorite beaches so far, really. And there are a lot of great beaches. Okay, I'm gonna swim to shore, I'm gonna run down the beach and I'll meet you at the point. 
See you soon. Yes, sir. -y. So running down the beach is a lot harder than, say, running down the street, especially when there's a sharp incline like this. Also, the sand was wet and heavy, and my feet were sinking deep into the sand on every single step, so I was getting tired fast. Additionally, it was really, really hot, and I was really glad to get to the point where I could get into the water and have a nice swim out to the boat. So once I tried to get into the water, I realized just how big the waves were and how strong the undertow was. I mean, this was not going to be an easy task, but I had to make it back to the boat because we needed to get going to the next beach. As you can see, as I swim, I'm really not making a lot of progress here. I'm struggling against the waves. Uh, the undertow has subsided a bit here, but I'm being tossed around quite a bit, and frankly, I'm really tired from the run down the beach. Every time I get closer, it seems like the waves toss me around and push me back in the other direction. Finally, the boat's in sight, and I'm edging my way ever closer. As you can see, I'm quite tired here. He made it! Got it! Yeah. Woot! You're alive! Uh, Epic journey. Workout complete. Oh, yeah, yeah. No more exercise needed today. All right, we'll pull into our final stop today. Of course, besides our final destination, which is Santa Cruz again, this is called Oregano Beach or Mage Bay. And this is a place we're very familiar with. We've been here many times. It's gorgeous. It's easy to get to. Literally a uh, five to seven minute cab ride and you're there. And there's restaurants and conveniences. It's an awesome place. So uh, we're wrapping up our day here today, but uh, what an awesome day it's been. I hope you've really enjoyed it. Hit me up with all your questions. Hit me up with your comments. Again, I wanna know what is your favorite place in Mexico and why. Info at paradiseguy.com and of course in the comments below. I will answer or Christina will answer every comment or question that we get. So we really do want to hear from you. Hey, check it out. You can see El Faro from here. See it up there on the top of the hill? So somewhere over there, right? Like over there. You can see a lighthouse, right? I can. So if you're thinking Mage is Maggie, it's not. Um, it's not the Rod Stewart song. Um, but it's just as beautiful. Okay, so I misspoke before. This is Organo, which is a beach next to Mage, but the stone face is right back there. I mean, it's really cool. It looks like an old man recovering from a hangover or passed out or sleeping, or maybe he's dead, I don't know. But it's an old man's face in the stone back there, and it's really cool. And here we are at Organo, which is another pristine destination. Looks like we're the only ones here.
So Organo is really just right around the corner from Mage, which is a very famous place that you can get to very easily. But here you can't get to unless you come by boat or if you swim from Mage. So um, there's not a lot of people that come here. It's very, very pristine, it's very beautiful. It's got the famous stone face over there, which is totally cool. Once you see it in person, it's much more impressive than on video. So if you come to Huatuco, be sure to make this one of your stops. So uh, this is our last stop today before we get back to Santa Cruz. Um, it's been an amazing tour. If you have any questions about what to do, where to go, or how to have fun here in Huatuco, or anywhere up and down the Oaxaca coast, and or Mexico in general, and or Belize, please set us up at info at paradisegat.com. We're always here to help. We're always here to make sure you have the most awesome time possible. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and smash that like button for us. We certainly do appreciate it. How come everywhere I go, there's always a buzzard? Like, am I really that old? Am I about ready to get eaten by buzzards? I mean, everywhere. I don't know. I think they're turkey vultures, actually. I, I'm not sure what kind of vultures they are, but they're very prolific out here. They're everywhere. And uh, they're friendly, too. They actually come when you call them, um, and they like to be fed from your hand. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Um, but they are beautiful in their own special way. Don't mess up your hair, whatever you do. The hair is getting the hair wet is not allowed. Nope, Come on, you can do it. Reach the beach. Okay, so we got some people over here snorkeling. Must be something interesting to see, right? Some fish, some corals, some rocks, something. But uh, no, really, it's it's awesome to swim in this water. I mean, the water is so temperate, and you can see quite well. Maybe not quite as clear as the Caribbean, but nice and warm. Beautiful scenery and the beaches. God, no sargassum. Can I say that again? No sargassum. <laughs> Lots of stuff? Yeah, I read all the stuff and discovered that their translation skills are interesting. <laughs> it's worth a look. All right, I'll check it out. So I'm giving this place a thumbs up. It's so easy to get to. It's close to town. Literally, you can catch a little boat over from Mage and you could be here in like two minutes. And look at this place. I mean, it's amazing. It's, I don't know, pretty darn cool. Don't tell anybody. Well, it looks like we might have some weather heading our way. It's common. You get uh, these thunderstorms that most of the times they miss you. They stay in the mountains. But every once in a while they come to town and give us some rain, which is good because everything starts to dry out this time of year. So a little bit of rain is a good thing. I hear a storm. Hear the thunder? Let's hear. Let's see if we can hear it. I'm listening. The audience is listening. Didn't that used to be like a THX movie preview thing? Yeah, it did. The audience is listening. 
Okay, so this is the last time you get me to see me swim to the beach and back, so enjoy it. Viva de viva de viva, de viva 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 de I also like that it's really easy to get to. So this is definitely going in my little checklist of places to come for sure. All right, now we're headed back to Santa Cruz. But not before I have my first of the day. Oh, yay, she had a beer, finally, yay. <laughs> okay, so the day wouldn't be complete unless we summed up what we thought our favorites were and why. So uh, Hikarao, the first one we visited, I really liked it. I mean, it was tough to get to. It took a while. I mean, we were on the boat for 45 minutes, an hour, in some rough seas to get there. So we paid a price, but absolutely phenomenal. Quite beautiful. Um, Omar, what was the second beach we went to? Uh, Chachaquan. Chachaquan? Chachaquan. Yeah. So Chachaquan, the second one we went to, really liked it as well. But man, when we first got there, tons of people which I didn't really care for, but once everybody vacated, I don't know, I liked that one a lot. But the place that was right next to it, what was the place? India. That? La India. Whew. I'm gonna say La India is right up there, number one or number two today for me, because La India had that natural barrier reef type of thing with rocks that made the bay extremely calm, the water extremely um, clear, so it was easy to see deep water and easy to swim. Um, and the beach was very, very pristine. Kakaluta though, Ooh, Kakaluta is like, you feel like you discovered a new planet. You feel like you discovered a, a, a new land. I mean, really, it's, you feel like you're the first one that's ever been there. So really like Kakaluta. Convenience, I like this place. So Christina, what do you think? Oh, I agree with a lot of your assessments there. Um... I think that Hikara was just really cool because it had a very intimate feel and sort of almost like a, sort of a romantic mysteriousness to it because they had all these little pathways going into the bush and uh, some cool granite rocks all around. Um, Chikawal, I actually really love the color and the feel of the water there. The waves had this nice sort of bouncy feel of them. Uh, it was really fun to be in the water there, but yeah, it was crowded. and. Um, um, India was as gorgeous as he says. Uh, I didn't get in the water. I wasn't as brave as he is, but yeah, I'll take his word for it. And um, Kakaluta, striking. It really is a surreal experience. And for that, I think it's probably my favorite. Uh, though Organo here is just, it's just nice. Uh, lots of cool features to look at, cool plant life, and um, fun stuff to read even about the area. So, and proximity. So they all have something amazing. Um, you can't really say one is better than the other. It depends on what you're looking for. I think you can find something for everybody. So, if you have any questions about any of the places we visited today, of course, hit us up at info at paradisesky.com. And if you want to come down here and go on a tour like we did today, let us put you in contact with Omar because he'll show you a great time. He's got a great boat and he really knows a lot about what is going on in this area. He's been doing this for over 10 years and uh, he really uh, knows how to drive the boat, especially on rough seas. He knows uh, a lot about the different areas, which is very important because when you go there, you wanna know a little bit about the history, a little bit about you know what is special about that particular place. And he is also fluent in English. So that is a big plus as well for all of you people that are coming down here that don't yet speak Spanish. So with that, we're gonna head back to Santa Cruz now 
and uh, we'll sum it up from there. What is he doing? What's he doing, Beaver? Is he pulling up the anchor? Well, cheers. Bahia Organo, La Playa Organo. Adios, hasta luego. All right, well, we've come to the end of our day here. We're back here in Santa Cruz at the marina. Uh, it was amazing. We got to see some amazing bays, some amazing beaches, and we get to learn a lot uh, on this expedition. So um, if you have any questions about anything that we experienced today, we're happy to fill you in and or direct you to people who know a lot more than us. With that, my name is William Nayrod. As always, I'm the Paradise Guy. Say goodbye to Christina. And of course, little baby Viva. And Omar, say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us today. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Give this video a thumbs up and by all means, click on notifications so you can catch our next video. We'll see you down here soon. My name is William Nayrod. Cheers. <laughs>